imagine you are in the middle of an extremely hot and dry desert. It's so hot that all you see is the burning sand and no sign of life. You are panting for your breath and sweating profusely. Then all of a sudden you see that someone is coming in your direction. And that person has two options for you. He has a bottle of juice and a glass of water. What would you choose? Well guys, undoubtedly you will choose water. Well that's what I would have done and right now I'm not implying the answer. Obviously that totally depends on your taste but I'm talking about a general observation for what would have happened. And this is what we have to study today. We have to discuss about this magical universal solvent that is water. Well, the earth surface, about 70% of the earth surface is made up of water. And even if I talk about the human body, 65% of the human body constitutes water. Well guys, we all know that water is essential for the survival of all the forms of life. And that's what we are going to do today. We will discuss the different uses of water, structure of water and the different properties of water. And first of all, let's start with the physical properties of water. Well guys, if I talk about the basic ones, you know them very well that water that is a colorless and tasteless liquid. We have done that and we know it very well. And this regards to the hydrogen bonding of water as well. Well, the structure of water that has the presence of hydrogen bonds. And due to the presence of these hydrogen bonds, that leads to a very high boiling point, very high melting point, a high value for the heat of vaporization and even the heat of fusion. Now guys, this property of hydrogen bonding leads to a very interesting question. Why do alcohols or carbohydrates, they dissolve in water? Well guys, the answer lies in the structure of water. As we just discussed that water has the presence of hydrogen bonds and due to the presence of hydrogen bonds, they form extensive bonding with the compounds like alcohols or carbohydrates as well and because of which whenever we are dissolving a polar molecule in water, they lead to the formation of hydrogen bonding. Now guys, coming to the main topic that is the structure of water. Now if I talk about the structure of water in the gaseous state, what we observe is a V-shaped structure or a bent structure. That's how we recognize the structure of water. Oxygen atom is attached to two hydrogen and is somewhat in the shape of the letter V. That's why we can give the shape as the V-shaped structure or the bent structure. Now guys, if I talk about the bond angle, the bond angle that is always found to be 104.5 degrees. And what else do we need to see? We need to see the bond length. That is the distance between the oxygen and the hydrogen atom. Now this distance is 95.7 picometer. And these are the two things that you have to memorize about the structure of water. The bond angle which is 104.5 degrees and the bond length which is 95.7 picometer. Now guys, we know this thing very well that water is a polar molecule. Now the question arises that why do we say it and on what basis can we say that water is a polar molecule? Well guys, this we say on the basis of its value of dipole moment. It has a very high value of dipole moment well, I hope you remember what dipole moment is. That is simply the multiple of charge and the distance between them. Like if we take up the structure of water, O, H and H, and then we can give the multiple of charges and the distance between any one of them. That's how we can give the dipole moment. And since this value is very high, therefore it is a highly polar molecule. Now, again, this leads to one more conclusion that ice floats on water. We have been listening to this statement. We have even observed that around us. The question is, how is it possible? Well, guys, again, the answer lies in the structure of water. In case of ice, what happens is water that is present in the form of cage-like structure. That is, the water molecules that are again showing extensive hydrogen bonding, no doubt. But this time, it is happening in the three dimensions. So very extensive three-dimensional hydrogen bonding is happening and due to which somehow there is increased gap between the water molecule. 
due to which now the distance is more therefore more space is there and hence it floats on water all right guys now let's move ahead and discuss the various chemical properties regarding water and first of all we will discuss about the amphoteric nature now what is this void well guys amphoteric nature that means water has the tendency to behave as an acid as well as a base for some reactions it is behaving as an acid for some reactions it is behaving as a base well let's just understand it with the help of this example as you can see in this reaction water that reacts with ammonia leading to the formation of hydroxide ion plus ammonium ion nh4 plus is formed and in the next case when water is reacting with hydrogen sulfide what happens in this case this time we are getting h3o plus plus hs minus confusing let me explain in the first case i say that water is behaving as an acid how does a compound behave as an acid well any compound that has the tendency to donate h plus ions and is that happening in the first case well yes that is happening the h plus ions donated by water they are taken up by the ammonia and hence that leads to the formation of nh4 plus and similarly if i talk about the second reaction in that case i say that water is behaving as a base why do i say that well if it behaves as a base that means it has the tendency to take up the h plus ions and that's what has happened in this case in this case water has taken up the h plus ions forming h3o plus plus the hs minus so guys like this whenever there are some reactions it behaves as an acid it behaves as a base and that's why we can say this magical solvent is amphoteric in nature now guys moving ahead to the next reaction now this is an interesting one in this case we will talk about the redox behavior of water what is that that means we will discuss the oxidation as well as the reduction nature of water First of all if i talk about the reaction of water with highly electropositive metals what happens in that case well guys whenever water reacts with highly electropositive metals like sodium potassium or lithium in that case it is reduced to dihydrogen and as you can see when we react it with the sodium what is happening in this case it leads to the formation of sodium hydroxide along with hydrogen and that's what we said water that is getting reduced to dihydrogen same way we can see the oxidation of water as well that is water converting to oxygen and what is the most common example that you see around us well think about it guys well guys now we are talking about the reaction of photosynthesis in this case as you know it very well that carbon dioxide is mixing with water leading to the formation of glucose and along with it oxygen is formed so we can say that in the second case now water that has oxidized to oxygen so this way we can say that water that has a redox behavior sometimes it is oxidizing and sometimes it is reducing all right guys now moving ahead to the next reaction that is the hydrolysis reaction so what happens in this case that some of the compounds they are getting hydrolyzed and leading to the formation of different types of acids or the oxides like let's take an example like this one in this case the oxide of phosphorus that reacts with water leading to the formation of h3po4 and what is that well that is phosphoric acid so we can say that water that has a tendency to convert the oxide into an acid and let's take a one more example this time if i take up the example of the chloride of silicon that is sicl4 the tetrachloride that's what we are talking In this case when it reacts with water what happens it leads to the formation of silicon dioxide and hydrochloric acid so we can say that water that has a tendency to show hydrolysis reactions all right guys now let's move ahead and talk the last reaction which regards the chemical properties of water that is the hydrate formation many aqueous solution they have the tendency to form hydrates of water and this is possible in three different ways that is water can be present in a compound in different types of compounds that is it could be the coordinated water it could be in the form of interstitial water and sometimes it is in the structure of hydrogen bonded 
Now, as you can see, there are examples which are given to you. In the first case, as I said, that coordinated water is there. That is CRH2O6 3 plus. In that structure, water is coordinated within the chromium and it is present within the bracket. That is, we are talking about the whole of the structure. Well, guys, you will study about this one in very detail in the chapter Coordination Chemistry. Right now, what you have to remember is just the three examples. They are the coordinated water form and the interstitial water form and the hydrogen bonded form. So talking about the next example, that is barium chloride dot 2 h 20 and the last one where we are saying about copper sulfate dot 5 h 20 So what you have to remember is that water leads to the formation of hydrates and that is happening in three different ways and which are being given to you here. So guys, this was all about the universal solvent water, its different characteristics, the presence of water and the different chemical properties that water exhibits. Well guys, what is of our concern is from the examination point of view, what you have to memorize is mainly the structure of water and the chemical reactions that we have talked about. Well, we will discuss about the hardness of water in our next class. Before that, let's summarize what we have done in this class. Water. Water is a tasteless and colorless liquid and due to the presence of extensive hydrogen bonding, it has a very high value of boiling point, melting point, enthalpy of vaporization and enthalpy of fusion. Water molecule has a bent structure with a bond angle of 104.5 degrees and the bond length between OH is 95.7 picometers. Chemical properties of water. Water is amphoteric in nature, that is, it can behave as an acid as well as a base. For example, reaction with ammonia, water behaves as an acid, whereas on reaction with hydrogen sulfide, water behaves as a base. Redox reactions involving water Water can lead to the formation of dihydrogen by its reduction when it is reacted with a highly electropositive metal like sodium, potassium or lithium. In case of photosynthesis, it is oxidized to oxygen, showing the oxidation of water. Hydrolysis reactions Water reacts with the oxide of phosphorus to lead to the formation of phosphoric acid, whereas it reacts with tetrachloride of silicon to lead to the formation of silicon oxide as well as hydrochloric acid. Hydrate formation From aqua solution, many salts can be crystallized as hydrated salts. It depends on the association of water in different ways that can be done as interstitial water, coordinated water and hydrogen bonded water.